Hey. There's a lot of people out there who are liberty lovers or whatever, and they're not very consistent. A lot of them, it's because they are just really attached to some part of the state. Either, you know, they're, they're attached to cops or borders or, um, you know, drug safety or, you know, they, they want people protected from themselves and they want to be protected from irresponsible people. And for whatever reason, they don't want to do it themselves. They want someone to do it for them. And, you know, that just, that does really kind of gnaw at me when, when they're presenting themselves as being pro-liberty, whether they call it libertarian or, you know, anarchist, voluntarist, whatever, but they're they're presenting themselves as <clears throat> basically on my team and yet they're really doing the work of the enemies of liberty. And <clears throat> I, I don't know. I don't, I've been there too. There was a time when, you know, I was, what you call a constitutionalist. I thought that the Constitution, you know, if we would just get back to the Constitution, as they always say, you know, that would solve a lot of the problems or whatever. Um, I got over it, especially because I actually got to looking at the Constitution and things like that and saw that, you know, you can't get liberty by following a document that is anti-liberty at its heart. And establishing a state is not liberty. It's the opposite. Doesn't matter, you know, what kind of state. You cannot have a good state. Just like there cannot be a good cop, there cannot be a good state. Some are worse than others, but none of them are good. They all are a violation of rights and liberty and all of that. They, they don't protect anything. And for liberty lovers, especially those who kind of uh, get off track by chasing these various statist ghosts or whatever, the problem is consistency. They're just not consistent. And you know, I kind of get that too, because everybody, including myself, is going to have feelings that real liberty kind of offends. And it, it's inescapable. I have a lot of personal preferences that are kind of anti-liberty. You know, I, I don't want people to be able to do these things, whether you're saying not allowed to do these things or, or whatever. And, you know, the, the thing that I just have to get over is that is not within my right to, to say that they can't do that or to call for a, call for a state to punish them for doing that. It's, it's just not within my rights. So, I have to get over my personal feelings and realize that it's more important to, to be consistently on the side of liberty than it is to, to make myself feel better or feel safer or whatever it's um on when where liberty is concerned my feelings are irrelevant completely and i guess a lot of people just can't handle that reality for themselves um 
you you've got to be consistent because if you're not consistent then anything goes if you can find an excuse to violate liberty just because of one thing you'll keep looking and you'll find excuses to violate liberty in other ways and that is just a path to absolute destruction and tyranny and i don't want that i'm willing to overlook some of my own feelings to avoid things like that because that is more important so you know if you if you have some some little blind spots or objections to liberty in certain areas you might want to look at it and see exactly why and and see if it's just feelings that are keeping you from really standing up for liberty the way that deep down you know you really should all right talk to you later